the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Now, gracious Heavenly Father, as we open thy word to study today, speak to my heart and speak through these lips of clay, O God, in Jesus' name. May thy will be done as the gospel hour continues. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. I, we're studying the millennium, but I want to read to you today before I continue in Acts 15, verse 13 and following. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Now, they had had a conference concerning the legalizers and their demands upon the believers. They said, unless a man be circumcised after the law of Moses, he can't be saved. They, some of them said, you are saved by grace, but you must obey the law. Now, law and grace does not mix. So they had a council, and they discussed it. And now James stands up, and he said to the crowd, listen to me, hearken to me. Simeon had declared how that God did at first visit the Gentiles, to take out of them a people for his name. And that's been going on now for almost 2,000 years. And so we are living in the day of the taking out of the Gentiles. That is, the calling out of individuals to make up the bride. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written, After this I will return. Now here's what I want you to see today because we're going to study the temple. In the millennium, the temple right here upon this earth. And after this, I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins that off, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Now then, we're going to study the temple, and it will be rebuilt in Jerusalem, the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. Now, this will occur after, of course, the rapture of the church. That is, someone wrote to me the other day and said, Brother Green, will the temple be rebuilt before the rapture? Now, some years ago, well, in fact, it's been 30 years ago, an outstanding evangelist in Greenville, South Carolina, made the statement that the Jews have all the stones cut. And he said he had this on good authority. Now, I can't give you, listen carefully so you won't write to me and ask me about this. I cannot give you the authority that he had. The, the man's dead now. He was, in that day, he was one of the greatest and one of the best known. And he said at that time, the Jews had the stones cut to build the temple when the time comes. Now, that may be true. I said that may be true. I don't know. But if it is true, it's all right. And if it isn't true, it's all right. Because God can work a miracle and the temple can be rebuilt in a matter of days at the appointed hour. And God knows when that hour is. I don't. God does. And he'll see to it that everything runs according to schedule. Now, when the church is taken out, the Antichrist will come on the scene. He will reign for about seven years, and then Jesus will return and stand on the Mount of Olives, and we talked about that on the last broadcast, and the mountain will split in the middle, and a great river will flow, a river of water, clear living water. Now, today, I'm going to talk about the temple, and as I said a moment ago, a literal temple will be rebuilt, and there will be temple worship. Now, we have seen the temple or the sanctuary will be located in the center of the holy oblation 
a full description of this millennial temple is given in Ezekiel. And I want you to read this. I read it just a moment ago, and I, I can't afford to take the time on the radio because it would take all the time I have left. But I want you to read Ezekiel 40, verse 1, through chapter 44 and verse 31. Now put that down. Ezekiel chapter 40 and begin with verse 1 and read chapter 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, right through verse 31. Now you read all of that when we leave the radio today. No such building as Ezekiel minutely describes every detail he describes here has ever been built in the city of Jerusalem. And therefore, since it is in the Word of God, and since it is described in every minute detail and pinned down by the prophet of God, then I say emphatically and without apology, it will be rebuilt, it must be built, if the Bible is the Word of God, and I say the Bible is the Word of God. Now, this cannot refer to the temple built by Zerubbabel, or to the temple built by Herod. There has never been a temple like it in Jerusalem. There is not one today. And therefore, I declare that it is a blueprint, a Bible description of the temple that will be built right here upon this earth in the city of Jerusalem, and it will be the Millennial Temple. Now, someone may say, well, maybe this is the temple for the new earth when we'll have a new heaven, a new earth, and the pearly white city. No, because we note that the water flows into the sea, and it speaks of the, the sea and the river, but we read that in the new earth there will be no more sea. Revelation 21.1 tells us that there will be no sea. Did you know when God renovates this earth or melts it down, and when God gives us a new earth, there will be no oceans, no seas. The Mediterranean will not be there. The Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian, the Arctic, the Antarctic, all, all of the seven seas will be destroyed or done away with. We will not need them in the new earth. There will be no sea. This proves beyond any shadow of doubt that this temple that is prophesied to be built in the holy city is the temple of the millennium. Now, the Aaronic priesthood will be reestablished, and the sons of Zedok shall officiate and offer sacrifices in the temple. Read Ezekiel 44, 15 through 31. Study that especially. I've already given you these, this reference. But you be sure and read verses 15 through 31, and you'll see that the priesthood and the sacrifices will be made. But, now listen, there will be many things missing in the temple in the millennium that were found in the temple under the Mosaic system. Now listen very carefully what I'm saying. The temple that will be built in Jerusalem will not have in it many of the things that the other temple, that is, the temple under the Mosaic system had. For instance, the new temple will not have the Ark of the Covenant. There will be no pot of manna. There will be no Aaron's rod that budded. There will be no tables of the law, no cherubim, no mercy seat, no golden candlestick, no showbread, no altar of incense, no veil, and there will be no unapproachable holy of holies where the high priest alone is allowed to enter, nor is there a high priest in this temple because... Jesus, the high priest, Jesus, the lamb, was slain for the remission of sin, and he was raised, and he ascended, and he now sits at the right hand of the majesty, the great high priest, and there will not be a high priest in the temple in the millennium. Now, the Levites as a class 
will perform in the temple service. They will be barred from priestly duties. There will be no priestly duties. Read Ezekiel 44, 10 through 14. There shall be a daily morning sacrifice, but no sacrifice in the evening. A morning sacrifice, but no evening sacrifice. Ezekiel 46, put this down. Ezekiel 46, 13 through 15. The offerings will be, now listen, the burnt offering, the meat offering, the drink offering, the sin offering, the peace offering. Ezekiel 45, 17, read it. And then the trespass offering, Ezekiel 42, 13. There will be two feasts observed in the temple, and it'll be the Passover, the Passover but there'll be no Passover lamb because Jesus, the lamb, has been slain to die no more. There will be no need of the lamb. Read Ezekiel 45, 21 through 24. Ezekiel 45, 21 through 24. The feast of the tabernacles will be observed also. Zechariah 14, 16 through 19. Now, the feast of tabernacles is to be observed by all the nations on earth at that time. And there will be saved nations as well as the elect nation Israel. And all of these nations will observe the Feast of Tabernacles. And if they do not, they will suffer drought and plagues. The Feast of Pentecost will be done away with because... Pentecost was fulfilled. That is, of course, not everything that was prophesied in Joel was fulfilled at Pentecost, but the Holy Spirit did come, and he did remain right here upon this earth. Now, when the time of the millennium occurs before that day, there will be signs such as you find in Joel 2, verses 28 through 32. Now, I want you to read that. Joel 2, verses 28 through 32. Now, a message like this, it's impossible for me to read all this scripture. We'd be on this once a message a week. We'd be on it the whole week. So you read Joel 2, verses 28 through 32. Now, there has never been wonders in heaven and earth, such as blood, fire, pillars of smoke. The sun turned to darkness, the moon into blood. Now that did not occur on the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came down, there were no such signs. It is true that cloven tongues, uh, like as a fire, sat upon each of them. But these other signs did not occur, beloved, the ones that I have just given you. But they will happen before the great and the terrible day of the Lord. Now, when the Jews see Jesus standing on the Mount of Olives and they say, where did you get those scars? And he'll say, in the house of my friends. And when they see him, beloved, they will receive him. They'll fall at his feet. They'll worship him. And no doubt there will be a mighty outpouring of the spirit and the power of God upon the nation. But whether this will be universal or not, I cannot answer because the Bible certainly does not make it clear in such a way that I could say that it would pour, be poured out upon all nations. But I do know that the nation of Israel will receive a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God and the power of God and the presence of God. And it shall come to pass. Now I want you to listen to this. And please don't cut the radio off when I read this. Because this is the word of God. You wouldn't cut it off when I read this. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You wouldn't cut the radio off when I read John 3.16. Well, this is the word of God too, and please don't cut it off. Listen. It shall come to pass that ten men of all languages and nations shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Now, I'm going to read that again. And I want you to listen. I'll tell you where it is when I finish. I'm not going to tell you now. 
But I'll tell you the minute I finish where it is. Now listen. And it shall come to pass that ten men of all languages and nations, that is, various languages, various nations, different people, ten, will take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, one of the most hated people on earth for many centuries. You know that. You know that. I know there are dear Jews listening to me now and Gentiles, and I know that some of you will not fully appreciate all I've said and read, but it's the truth. It's the truth. And you know how the Jew has been persecuted and hated and despised. And there are peoples on earth today that would annihilate the Jew from the face of the earth if they could, but they can't and they never will. And it shall come to pass that ten men of all languages and nations shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you. We want to go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Now that's Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 8, verses 22 and 23. Zechariah 8, 22 and 23. In that day, the day of the millennium, there will be one universal religion. Malachi 1, 11. Malachi 1, 11. Shekinah glory. The presence of God. The brightness of God. Yes, Shekinah glory that departed from the temple at the time of the Babylonian captivity. And you'll read about it in Ezekiel 10. Ezekiel 10 verses 18 through 20. Ezekiel 11 verses 22 and 23. You'll read about the time of captivity when the children of Israel were captives of Babylon. The Shekinah glory that departed will again reside in the new temple in the city of Jerusalem, in the millennial earth. Ezekiel 43, verses 1 through 5. If you're born again, you'll reign with Christ, the bride, the New Testament church. And if you're born again, you are a member of the New Testament church if you're born again. Now, if you're not born again, you're not a member of the New Testament church. You may be a member of a local church. You may be a member of a religion. But if you're not born again, you're not a member of the, the church of the living God, the New Testament church, the bride of Christ. But if you're washed in the blood, if you're saved by God's grace, if you are a true believer, born of his spirit, washed in his blood, you are a member of the New Testament church and you will reign with Jesus, hallelujah, along with all the believers, the church, for 1,000 glorious years right here upon this earth. And the temple will be rebuilt in Jerusalem. That is, I keep saying rebuilt, it'll be built. Of course, there have been many temples, but this will be the millennium, the temple of the millennium. It'll be built, and Jesus will sit on the throne of David and the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters now cover the sea. And there will be peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And men will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And they'll study war no more. Jesus will be present. And what a glorious time that will be. And if you're not born again, you can be right now. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in Jesus and ask him to save you. He will. Father, in the name of Jesus, for his sake, honor, and for his glory... I beseech thee, O God, save all who are under conviction, deepen conviction, and draw by thy mighty power all who are lost, listening now, and save that soul that's nearest hell. Bless believers, for Jesus' sake, amen.